evening. Good evening, please rise. Let's pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen for December 5th, 2016. We have a couple of comments here. Does anybody like to speak? Yes, please get up. State your name and let me just move this over a little bit. Hi, Norman Silberdick, uh, 70 Tide Mill Road, speaking on behalf of uh, Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. Uh, Last week, I got a letter from the uh, Social Security Administration awarding me a 0.3% uh, increase in my uh, Social Security check, which amounts to $7 a month, and then they increased uh, the medical deductions uh, by several hundred dollars. So my net result was a reduction in my monthly Social Security check by $150. That uh, put me in a rather uh, agitated state of mind so I drafted a letter of things that are annoying me at the moment and I, I'm going to try and tone it down because I, I don't want to uh, you know you're a great board I don't want to insult you so uh, at the last meeting the, these are in no particular order um, the last meeting there was a discussion about the forecast for the year and uh, it was indicated that it's running a surplus along the lines of last year. And we thought that was a bit of a soft sell, that, and that there isn't a lot of analysis that goes into those numbers. And uh, based on the October year-to-date actuals, we're underspent by a million dollars or 4.5 percent. Whereas in 2015 we were under we had a, we were underspent by 575,000 or two and a half percent, so it's not the same. And in October 2014 we were under we were underspent by 281,000 or 1.2 percent. So the surplus continues to rise in the budgeting process. We went through the budget line item by line item, and we came up with a forecasted surplus this year before any projected spending of 1.4 million dollars which is about five percent of the total budget that's not good budgeting and what that is an incentive for departments to start spending money and the taxpayers are being taxed based upon uh, the projected budget and we think it's been it's just not good financial management being padded and we can identify all the areas if you're interested and we're happy to send you an analysis of it. But uh, giving the taxpayers a 500,000 reduction or million in the uh, undesignated reserve funds, it, it looks like it's a great deal, but it really isn't. So we're very concerned about the whole process, that the budget should be much tighter. Sure, it's great to have a surplus, but certainly not to the extent of 5% of the total budget. Second item I'm of concern is the right to know. The town manager and selectmen approved the policy. And we believe that if you're, uh, that adds a layer of bureaucracy, and that if you want to have a right to know, you bring a thumb drive into the office and you get back uh, your thumb drive. So that's two trips to, to deal with it. And uh, if you want a hard copy, the cost is now 25, gone from 25 cents to 50 cents a page. And meanwhile, um, Staples in a town library charge 10 cents a page to make a copy. It's sort of providing a disincentive for people to uh, uh, to, to uh, exercise the, the right to know law. I don't think it's appropriate. Third thing of concern is the budget committee. We continue to find a growing level of disrespect between the selectmen and the budget committee. Uh, the budget committee has a job to do. They are citizens giving of their time and effort. It's a great learning process for the people who are on that committee to learn how the town finances and how the town operates. And uh, the continued friction and the lack of timely information going to the budget committee, which affects their scheduling. Um, that needs to be taken a look at with the attempt to try and get 
a much better approach and a better cooperation between this board and the, and the, uh, and the uh, budget committee. The money warrant article. <coughs> Department of Public Works gave a presentation last week that was, uh, to say the least, uh, there were 10 items articulated that added up to 8.3 million. We have a feeling there's more to come. That's a big number. And uh, most of this funding is coming from long-term bonds. And the bonds are going to be have a tax impact for 20 years if, they, if they're uh, approved and set. We feel there needs to be limits set, priorities established, and practical solutions. And uh, we, we just were unimpressed with the Department of Public Works. We thought they had poor, get poor marks of preparation, planning, and delivery. And it just seems like they're either the director is over his head or he's burned out or something because he's just, okay, just not. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I just don't want, and, and pardon me, Norm, and yeah. you got to be getting here four minutes, but I'm not going to sit here and have a department head be called burned out and over his head. It's not, okay. it's not well, that kind of club. Right. Okay. Good point. Sure. I agree 100%. Okay. You're doing a good job up till there. All right. Thank you. Then I apologize. I don't mean to get into attacking individuals, but I'm, we're just very concerned with the, the, the effort. The Selectman Griffin was the only Selectman who opposed the $4 million um, marsh pipe article. It's something that we have uh, had issues with that and have offered assistance to the Department of Public Works about that. Um, there was also concern between the uh, dialogue between the Chief of Police and the Budget Committee about their private details. I know this caused some concern. It's been in the paper about the, uh, about the, uh, uh, the inter interaction where there's operational issues being discussed between the budget committee and, and the police chief. We think the police chief is a great guy. Does, he has one of the most important jobs in the community. And he was given, he has a large salary, he's given a raise. We just don't see, as a from a policy point of view, what the point is for him to doing any detail work. There's just no basis for it, and he should be here dealing with the with the issues of, of the town and the town only, and not engaged in any other activities for income producing purposes on a personal level. And if any of that stuff happens and it affects a spiking of his pension, we wind up paying for it. And my last issue is the concern about the taxpayer. We're very concerned about, you know, the taxes have gone in, in between 1997 and 2003, they went up in 70% in six years, then they flattened out after 10 years of uh, basically sound financial management, and now we're back in where there's very little analytical, analytical skills and the continued need for um, sound financial management. We're very concerned, especially with the school bond issue coming up and $8 million of capital spending and $26 million. The number is rising and rising, and we're looking at uh, potentially we're heading wrap towards up, $90 million bucks. Can we wrap it up? That's all I have to say. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak from the audience? Thank you. Uh, announcements and community calendar. Start with you, Rick. Nothing? Um, no, thank you. Phil? No, sir. Regina? I just wanted to say that I always enjoy the first Saturday in December, but this year I enjoyed it well. I was very proud to walk down with the rest of the selectmen of this town, and it was a great day, and I thank everyone that turned up and showed up for it. Perfect as usual. Thank you, John Nine. Thank you, Experience Hampton. Right, and I would like to thank the Parks and Rec Department for the tree lighting on Friday night. It was the most well attended, I believe, of, of any, and it was uh, jam packed up there and everybody had a great time. It was, it was a great evening and the parade was great too. So both of those are great. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just take a minute to make a couple of comments. Mr. Silberdick, I wish he had stayed for a minute because he made some very uh, pertinent information there and I, and I agree with him 100% about the Warren articles. And we went back and did some research to make sure whether we were timely with the budget, budget committee or not. 2007, the Warren articles were first discussed in the budget committee on 1-9, January 9th. 2008, 1-8, they were first discussed. 2009, 12-4. 2010, 1-14. 2011, 1-13. 
2012, 112, 2013, 110, 2014, first discussed on 19, January 9th, only two articles discussed, 114 and 121, appears to be a tally votes. 2015, first discussed on 18 and 115. So we went back and did the research to make sure that we were not holding up the budget committee on anything and that we were getting it to them in a timely fashion and because we don't want to hold them up. The other thing I want to say, Mr. Chairman, is that you know some of the comments that are made, that are being made from the budget committee are giving misinformation to the public. You know, had we received our budget requests and Warren articles in a timely manner, none of this would be scrambling for dates now, changing the dates of the budget committee meetings. Not necessary. Uh, and I also want to make a comment that I think is very pertinent, that one member of the budget committee, the chairperson of the budget committee on Tuesday, last Tuesday's meeting, at 2 hours, 16 minutes, and 19 seconds into the meeting, people can go back and look at the video, stated, if the selectmen are going to stick their hand in the taxpayers' pockets. To me, that's implying that the tax, that the selectmen are doing something dishonest. And I think it's totally inappropriate for a member, an appointed member of a ta official town committee to making comments about <coughs> other boards and such that they're implying that they're doing something dishonest or at least trying to trick the taxpayers. If Mr. Sobadick wants to come in and make those statements, fine. It's an individual. But another, there should be a decorum between the budget committee and the selectmen between all committees. I would like to suggest, and I would like to make a motion, that the selectmen write a letter and send it to the chair of the budget committee. And I would like to have it included in our minutes. And I will make that motion. To say? To say what? To say uh, that this statement, if the selectmen are going to stick their hand in the taxpayers' pay pockets, is a totally inappropriate and uh, inappropriate statement to be made between boards. We could add a little bit to it. I second that motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Brian, I would just add that yep. um, and, and we're, on the, we're on it and hopefully it clears for the evening. And uh, I thank Mr. Soberdick for his interest in, in uh, the uh, town financial matters. And he, and he does uh, carry a lot of water running the uh, uh, trust fund and that's, that has performed well uh, over the years. Um, and it's uh, uh, the appointed official, uh, and I, I emphasize appointed official, that is uh, uh, Madam Chair Wolseley. And uh, of course, Regina Barnes took that seat in an election and uh, is now sitting with us, and we're proud to have her. But uh, the chairperson of the Budget Committee is appointed and is not elected by the people of Hampton. Uh, during uh, her last tenure as a selectman, I asked her to uh, have her email blocked from my account because she continuously, and up until this date, and there's emails right here, violates uh, uh, what would be the appropriate uh, term? She she copies everybody, and it's essentially holding a meeting. Uh, town council is briefed, all of the boards and committees in this town about that. But she sends out emails consistently. Last week, I believe I spoke to you, Mr. Welch, sure. to have her uh, email blocked <clears throat> from my account. I do not want to participate in activities that are illegal by statute in the state, state of New Hampshire. I would encourage anyone that's receiving these emails from uh, Madam Wolseley uh, to not uh, not accept them because it is a violation of, of state law. And they are myriad, they are ongoing. She does not listen to the town council. She doesn't listen to the town manager. She won't listen to the statutes. And uh, she continues up until this day, up until this week, to violate that state law. So I just wanted to raise that issue if we're going to uh, air our laundry, as, um, as um, perhaps Madam Wolsey wants to do. Um, I just wanted to add that on the record, that there is a continuing violation of essentially uh, meetings being held online with a town asset, with town email accounts, and I want no part of it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And I, too, would like to thank everybody for the parade. I think it was an excellent weekend. We had a, uh, a, lot, of, um, a lot of good stuff going on in this town this weekend. Um, I talked to the, I had a question asked me today when, when they're going to show the parade again on channel 22, but they, cause they didn't get to see it. I talked to the cable 
the guys in the cable office, they said they're working on downloading it right now, so it should be up shortly. So those who couldn't see it should be able to see it in the next day or so. We have a consent agenda. We have a parade and public gathering license. We have a church nativity scene. And we have an amendment to 805-32 stop sign intersections. I move the consent agenda. Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, approval of November 14th, 2016 to amend Do we the minutes. I make that motion. I second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments? Ed Tanker. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here tonight, um, presented to the board um, some tax collector abatements. Uh, these are abatements that are processed through the tax collector's office relative to um, bookkeeping purposes to balance the books um, at the time of setting the tax rate. Um, you got two lists. One list uh, is exactly that, um, especially in a reval year with uh, value changes as well as um, flipping two camera systems. Uh, there'll be uh, a number of parcels that either don't get deleted or should be, it be deleted, and there's some bookkeeping purposes. Uh, there's 16 properties in that list, totaling 35, 437, 47. Again, those, that's just um, for the tax collector to balance the books. Uh, the second list uh, consists of 17 properties. Those are actually refunds that I'm requesting the board to approve tonight. Um, those all have to do with negative bills. That's uh, based on the revaluation, of course, and the change in value between tax bills. In this regard, seven, 17 properties had lower tax bills on the second bill than the first and, and require uh, small refunds. Again, the total for those 17 properties is $2,258. So I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the abatements. Approve the abatements. I'll second. And Ed, could you just reiterate again, it, the, the, it, because of negative values, because of the revaluation, their property value went down? The property values went down, and, and, and exactly. When, when the reval, there's going to be a change, and these ones, these 17 properties had had uh, reduced bills. Thank you. Oops, fine. She needs the last one. Oh, she needs the last one. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Good night. Thank you. Ah, now we can get rid of it. Now we have a uh, town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the submission of zoning amendment warrant articles uh, ends a week from this coming Wednesday. And the submission of regular warrant articles for the town meeting continues until January 10th. So um, those should be submitted by the close of business next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, um, if you have warrant articles for zoning. A contract for crack sealing was awarded to Crack Sealing Incorporated as the low um, of three bids received at a cost of $10.89 per gallon of sealant applied. Uh, and that's less than $15,000 actually in the bid total. Uh, the, an HVAC service agreement was signed with Palmer and Saccard in the amount of $6,690 for the annual maintenance of the fire department's HVAC systems, and that's both stations, commencing January 1, 2017. Primer and Sakai was the second lowest bidder. The agreement was, was awarded based upon the company's responsiveness for emergency uh, call-ins and in accordance with the qualifications requirements contained within the purchasing policy. Aquarium Water Company has completed and filed the 2016 Wetlands Protection uh, Program Compliance Report, which is just a few pages, uh, if anybody's interested in it. It's about an inch and a quarter report. It'll be in the Selectman's office for anybody who wants to come in and take a read for it. Um, residents should be aware that carts are to be removed fr from the streets and sidewalks following the town's collection of, tr of waste materials. The lid 
on pull carts must be completely closed with no materials on top of the carts or overflowing uh, out from underneath the lid. Uh, that's become a problem in some areas of the town. Carts found in that condition will not be picked up in, in, in such cases. The resident must take their waste to the transfer station in accordance with town ordinances. And the reason they won't be picked up is because when they pick them up with a vehicle, that material spills in the street because it's not inside the cart. And uh, that is it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the town manager? Regina? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Jim? Nothing. Phil? No, sir. Bert? No, thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next is old business. We will talk about the 2017 Warren articles. Would you like to come up and join us? Okay. Or are you going to sit back there? In case we have questions, it's... employees. Mr. Chairman, I did talk to the Public Works Director today, and my information from him is that they wish to withdraw that article. It would be 26. Which one? Article, article 26. 26. No DPW employees. That won't be the finished article number. No, but that's the, as we have them right, right now. Right. Article 26. That's the one they came with us last week, and we, and we sent them back. Um, uh, I understand. You know, he he realizes that there are a lot of money articles, um, and this one did need some work on it. It did. Um, however, that just still doesn't affect the need that we still need workers at Public Works and. Uh, and uh, as we move forward, I would ask that we ask the Public Works Director um, for next year to talk about how many, how many new roads have we put on in the past, say, 10 years? How many new houses or condominium projects or properties do we have that we continue to pick up carts at? How many new properties there are that we have to service for sewer? Uh, we continue to add more and more to this town, put on more roads. I can think of three this year. There was the McCar McCarran Drive. There was Litchfield Drive. There was uh, the, the one down here. Hilliard. Uh, Hilliard. We have Sweat Drive. There's four roads right there that are going to have new houses on them, that new roads that we need to maintain. And we continue to ask our public works to do more and more with less and less. And it's come to a tipping point where you can't keep asking people to do it all and not expect to give them the manpower to do it. So we will take that one off the boards. I have something that sort of segues into this. Okay. It, it, it regards another Warren article. <clears throat> and this is uh, information that someone brought forth to me. And <clears throat> it is somebody that's in the know and knows how the budget works and everything. And they brought, they were mentioning that since those side armed, um, Packers have been bought that even with $200,000 worth of um, repairs to the sidearms, the town has still saved a million point two oh, yeah. in uh, employee <coughs> cost. Mm -hmm. yep. And that doesn't include all of the potential uh, workman's comp. And, you know, it's something that could any. There were a lot of there at one point we had a lot of issues with workmen's We did. Absolutely. And we still have probably a lot. So that is something to keep in mind. And I, you know, would like to know what the DPW director thinks about that, you know, in regard to the how does that affect the Warren article that's in there now for the side um, packer. Also, I had another call. I had calls from people on the side streets 
that are concerned about having the trash pulled over to their side of having it all on one side yes because yeah. they have a bit motel it right. takes up several yeah. lots and they're they're upset about the pot I don't know is it happening now no no and it's not projected to happen it's just something that was discussed yeah well, they really the people that on the Connecticut Village weighed in heavily yeah. against having all of the other people's uh, trash in yes, there I, I did talk to her okay. yes and so we had, we had a very you. long <laughs> conversation and went into great detail on it. okay very nice lady so I just thought I'd bring those things up <clears throat> so the next one we have is uh, human resource human Sur human service agencies which is right now article 30 <coughs> That, Mr. Chairman, is uh, for 20 human service agencies. The cost for this year was $174,475, and that's the same cost projected for 2017. Any questions on this article? Yes. I, I have a question. Do we get reports, or, or do, do they get reports from these agencies of how they're spending the money? Yeah, about a quarter of that book is the reports. Okay, so yeah. we, we, we do know that the money is being spent we we send a letter to them every fall and what we want several things we request one that they we request that they send in their request for funding if they would like to have refunding and, and repeat the following the, the previous year and we require them to file a copy of their annual report as it's available some of them file a little later because it's they have a different fiscal year but if they don't file a report because of an order from the from the town meeting then they we, we will their name will not show up on the list this town meeting has ordered them to file those reports. Okay. So, All right. yeah, we do have them. And how long have we been doing this? Oh, gosh, longer than I've been here. So, okay. yeah, not quite a number of years. Right. Long time. Just yeah. long, long time. Clarification. I mean, some have been added and deleted over the years, but right. this this list has been there for we, uh, 30 we, years. Anyways. We use them frequently to augment our uh, public assistance requirements. So they, they do provide us a lot of additional assistance. Okay. Thank you. Cool. And, and, and Mr. Welch raised a good point. This is essentially an extension of the welfare uh, right. department, which is a very, very small, small budget. And this is a force multiplier that really enables us to keep that down. Um, and Mr. Welch, could you elaborate, please? I know there have been sessions where the representatives come in and actually brief the board. Is that gone by the boards, or, or what is the procedure now? Only if we have a problem. Okay. Uh, basically, they try to keep things at the same level every year for us. Mm -hmm. uh, there are sometimes extenuating circumstances, like Meals for Wheels sometimes has to increase. Okay. Um, but they basically offset each other. Mm -hmm. And if there's an individual problem, we invite them in to meet <coughs> with the board and talk about okay. the problem. And we have uh, myriad uh, agencies that support uh, residents and, and citizens or, or uh, folks that are in need. And how does the public gain access to that information that's in that binder that you just alluded to? Oh, they can come in and look at it anytime okay. they want. Uh, and we don't put it up online or anything like that. Why not? Because there's so much of it. Okay. Well, it's a scan and, and uh, post process, correct? Yeah, there's okay. a, but there's a ton of it. Okay. Well, I work in a paper business, too, and yeah. I get a ton of stuff that's scanned, and it's 70, 80 pages at a whack, and it's yeah. like that. So I would make the motion that... Most uh, of these are bound, so we'll have to debind them, and we'll have to... Let's, let's, uh, I, would, I would make a motion for transparency. It's $174,000. It's a lot of money uh, that those agencies that are requesting that uh, provide uh, via PDF their annual report their uh, request again for um, funding and we can make these phone calls there's plenty of time to do it and that it is posted to the website I'm looking for a second I'll second that and, and like you said in, in, instead of just scanning these we can call and request they send us as a PDF file so that there's no scanning it's just the file it's put up. This, this is this is for, 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 for the voters to know just what it, what is being done on their behalf for, for people that are less fortunate perhaps and in need and it, it actually highlights the importance of these uh, these agencies and I think the public needs to know that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. So I need a, now I need a motion and a second for this article. I make a motion to approve the human service agencies uh, one hundred seventy-four thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Second, second by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, the next one is Tuck Field Office and Storage, and that is. I'll let Diana have my check. Uh, Article thirty-one. 
The director is here. I'll uh, I'll read it. Shall a town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for the purpose of constructing a new tuck field, a new structure at Tuck Field for one needed storage for department materials for their fourth season's activities, thereby allowing the department to centrally centralize and better control its resources, add an office and an activity space to meet for the increased needs for the department's many year-round activities and administrative work area, and to add space for activities for our senior citizens as their activities have substantially outgrown the available space. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 semicolon seven six and shall not lapse until the project is completed on March thirty first, two thousand twenty, which is ever sooner. Majority of vote required. So you wanna come up, Diane? Good evening. How are you? Um I have a couple articles here. The other one is 34 coming up. Okay. And um, I guess what I would say is I know that you guys have a lot of things on your plate as far as this goes with the school and all these other things that are coming up this year. But these are this one and Article 34, which is the other the position in the Parks Department, are things that I've been talking about for a few years. They're necessities that we need at some point. So I don't feel like I would be doing my job if I didn't let you know about these things that we needed so I just these are things that we're looking for in the future okay any discussion from the board Regina you want to start I just wanted to say thank you I appreciate you saying that that means a lot and I think it means a lot to people that are watching um, I think this year our priorities really need to be focused on the infrastructure right just because without that to me in my mind you know, right. nothing else matters. Uh, Chris Jacobs, I don't know whether it was at the budget, one of the budget committee's meetings last week or last week's board of selectmen meeting said that those were pretty much the main arteries of the community, and I think we need to fix those. And I do, you know, I'm down, down at Tuckfield all the time with my niece, and I know there's work that needs to be done there. Right. And I respect that, but I just, this year... Right, well, you never know what's going to come up each year for the different right. departments and stuff, so I just had to put out there what our needs are, and we do we do need more space, especially for our seniors, and we need more personnel in our parks department, for sure, um, like public works is one thing we are, too, so I just felt I needed to um, put it out there and see. But thank you very much. Jim? You know, negative, sir. Rick? Well... So I, I need some sort of motion to either recommend or not recommend or uh, table this one. Well, would we pull it? That's up to you. We can make a motion to pull it. Right, that I, would be up to you. If we do nothing, nothing happens, correct? If we do nothing, nothing happens, it will happen. It doesn't move forward. It doesn't move forward if it doesn't go by here. So I think that's the way it's going to go on this one. So it doesn't doesn't make it any less the, the space is needed we've right. talked about senior centers and senior senior space in this town for a long time and we understand that and we all know that but if, if uh, we you know we have a lot of tough choices to make this year and right and, and, I, understand. and, and I understand you understand yeah. that so the next one is what do you want to take for an action mr. chairman uh, no action no action so it will just be in essence, withdrawn because you're not acting on it. Right. Okay. The next one is uh, the Recreation Infrastructure Special and Revenue Fund. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise an appropriate sum of $93,300 for the following purpose of parks and recreations? To purchase a four sets of new bleachers and picnic tables for the Tuck Field baseball field an Eaton Park softball field, B, to purchase a Gator utility vehicle and trailer for the Parks Division, the replacement of a carpeting in the Tuck Building, the re-roofing of the Eaton construction st uh, concession stand, and the purchase of new office to replace the hand-me-down 1970 furniture that came with the town office at the time of the purchase. The re Have you seen the chairs in my office? Yes. <laughs> 
the resurfacing of two inbound play areas on the right hand tennis courts that include one coat of plexa cushion yeah. blue and one coat of US open blue plus striping and the restoration of Tuck One Field, the Don <coughs> Butler Diamond, as the field is uneven and requires removal of grass cover regarding regrading of the field as determined by the Board of Selectmen and the town manager and the Parks D Director of Parks and Recreation and to authorize the withdrawal of $93,300 from the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for the purpose under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Warrant. Annual Town Meeting. Majority vote required. No tax input impact. Does it increase the amount? Yeah. So you want to just kind of go over that? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say it is missing one piece that I had made an addition to. Yeah, I okay. think I sent you a copy of that. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, please add six thousand four hundred and forty dollars for the purchase of new registration software program for recreation right. office. Right. So, so that'll add to that $99,740 okay. as a total. So this warrant article will now be $99,740 right. with the inclusion of the, the software added. You want to be self-explanatory, you think? Uh, I think it is. Okay. I make a motion that we approve this. It's, it's no tax input impact whatsoever. It comes out of the fund that's built up for that. And I think like with the uh, the bleachers, it's a safety issue. Yeah. I mean, you get people sitting in those bleachers watching games all spring, all summer. Somebody falls, that's going to be that's gonna be an issue. Uh, all of this is necessary, needs to be done. It's not going to cost the taxpayer anything. I think we should approve it. And I think maybe the 1970 furniture might be worth something as retro. <laughs> <laughs> Selling on eBay. Let's say we have a motion to accept this warrant article as uh, it was amended. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So the next one is the Article 33, as we have that in the drafts, part-time position to full-time right. parks and recreations. So the town of Hampton vote to raise this. Yes. Appropriate the sum of fifty thousand seven hundred thirty-seven dollars for the purpose of changing the parks foreman position in the Parks and Recreation Department from part-time to a permanent year-round full-time position. With the growth of the town and the play seasons lengthening and the growing demands on the recreational facilities, the park foreman cannot do all that is required during the current limited schedule. This appropriation would fund the salary and benefits of the new full-time position. If the warrant article passes, the amount of $27,664 appropriated in the operating budget in Article 15 of the Parks Reac for the Parks and Recreation Foreman as a part-time position will not be spent. So. On this one, this, this money here would just bring this to a full-time position, but it's really um, looking at it as a difference of $23,000 difference from what's already in the budget to, to make it to make it uh, full-time salary plus benefits any discussion from the board you know I agree a hundred percent with the necessity I agree a hundred percent with the necessity but I'm just worried about this year I mean I agree a hundred percent and it's it, it it's you know, you have people coming in from other towns to the playing fields, looking at the fields. You know, it, 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 it's a showcase for Hampton. It's a display of what Hampton is. You know, I go to a lot of towns to watch my grandkids' games and stuff, and a lot of towns have absolutely spectacular fields, and it's not due to anybody not putting the work into the fields. They're just not having the people to do it, but I, I just don't know if I could vote for it this year, but I, I do think it's necessary. If I may expound on, on the uh, selectman's remarks, please. Uh, above the rim uh, facilities that are private concerns down in uh, um, next to our landfill operations uh, uh, sustain a very high intensity of uh, participation. It's private sector. They're a tax <coughs> organization, I believe. Uh, it's no cost to the town. 
uh, they uh, uh, rent rooms, they, uh, they use the uh, hospitality venues that are in this town quite heavily to include restaurants, and it's no extra money. Uh, I do not support additional uh, uh, employees at the Public Works Department, and uh, uh, for the same reason. I heard a description last week of the, the taskings that would be associated with that full time. Uh, we uh, listened to the director, and I uh, do not support Mr. Soberdick's comments about that presentation. Uh, it's one heck of a department and one heck of a director. But I would say that uh, um, we have Jamco and uh, many other uh, contractors that help out when we're burdened with surge operations to include snow removal, and it would rise to that level, I, I think, the same way of this. And I, I do agree that uh, um, we've got some heavy, heavy neglected, uh, uh, overlooked, and uh, bypassed uh, fiscal challenges associated with must-do, must-do infrastructure in this town by people like Mr. Silberdick's group that have never addressed those infrastructure requirements. And now it has come back to haunt us, and now it is time to pay the bill. And nobody wants to pay more taxes and we're all taxpayers on this board. So I, I don't support that. Sorry for the elaboration, but I did want to give some rationale behind it and thank you and your department for uh, the great work they do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? I agree with uh, Selectman Bean and Selectman Waddell. What I, I think one of the things that we've done this year is we had a subcommittee made up for wage and hourly prices. I think that's going to help us out a little bit. I think part of our problem, we, we've had it with the lifeguards and had it with everything else, is that we we may not, there's something wrong there, that we may not be paying enough, we may not be to include some of these things. We have to look at that. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe we need to get a few more part-timers there in the summer uh, to help you out. But it, it appears from this board that we can't support this this article going forward this year. Well, I'll go back to my original statement that I understand there's a lot of things on the plate and we all have needs and they're just going to have to come in line. So. Diana, we know that you do an excellent job <laughs> over there for what you have and what Thanks. you do. Thank you. Uh, you know, the, the citizens of this town are well served by your department. Thank uh, you. It is, um, and it, it's not just the children, it's the seniors, it's it's everybody. So it's uh, the, the adults playing basketball, the kids playing basketball, to the seniors and, and their thing. And, and we understand all of that, and we know uh, the time and time again the work you guys do to make sure you get your programs out there, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. And she spends a lot of time. She doesn't even really live in Hampton, but she takes a big part of the Hampton Historical Society and is very supportive in so many different things, and you are always there. And I think we all always notice it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. And, Okay, so the next one will be the Article 34 is written, the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Account. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise the appropriate sum of $90,000 to carry out all the lawful functions allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs and authorize the withdrawal of the amount from the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund created for that purpose under Article 35 of the 2003 town meeting? Majority required. So moved. Move second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Police traffic control devices. Article 35 as written. Shall the town of Hampton raise an appropriate sum of $68,000 to purchase the following traffic control devices to calm traffic and decrease speeding violations. Four pole-mounted radar devices that util utilize solar panels for power at $18,000. Three variable message boards that are remotely programmable at $40,500. And four temporary move movable speed bumps to calm speeding, uh, speeding on our streets at $9,500. Yeah. Is anybody speaking to this or no? Mr. No? If you got any questions, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I read this, and, and these things work. I, I know that because I know when I'm driving down the street and going too fast, and I see one of those uh, 34 or something, boom, I slow down. Uh, 
I just again, I, I'm just questioning if this is the year to do it. I mean, it's not a big amount of money, but we're doing some. We're asking the taxpayers for some huge amounts of money on I other agree. issues, <clears throat> and I, I would like to see the other issues get passed. And I, I just, I'm going to be against this. Same goes for me. Well, I would suggest then uh, gauging the uh, the board's tenor that we uh, take no action. I would agree. I won't disagree. That'd be uh, that'd be kind of. <laughs> Not very smart to do. However, uh, I just want to remind the board that we have had a number of complaints this year, and, and our police chief has been very good at, at addressing those neighborhood complaints with speed and stuff, and I'm sure he will continue to do that. Oh, yeah. And we will do what we have to do. So no action will be taken on that one, so we will pull it. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may just... Digress here for a second. Sure. I just looked at the, an article that we're not going to talk about. We've already talked about that's here, and I would just let, like to just ask people to go and watch the budget committee again, and a statement that was made about the children's room in the library by one of the budget committee members was beyond inappropriate, way beyond inappropriate. Certainly Something about suicide. Absolutely, I was certainly not. Way beyond with you. inappropriate. Yeah, let's not bring that. I'm sorry. Is, yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing it up, but it's way beyond inappropriate. Okay, so the next one we have is is Article 37, Conservation Fund. No, is that the one? Is that the one, Conservation Land Acquisition Fund? Yeah, uh, Conservation Fund, yes. Yes. Shall a town of Hampton vote and raise appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Fund? This is used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of otherwise conser conserve and properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36-A, sections 1 through 4, inclusive recent acquisitions such as Bachelors Fields Conservation Easement have significantly reduced the size of the fund and the goal is to return the fund to adequate levels to enable a conservation, a commission to conserve additional lands on behalf of the town of Hampton. Majority of the vote is required. How much is in the fund now? Do we know? Uh, not off the top of my head, no, but I, uh, we've added $20,000 for the last three years. There's got to be at least $60,000 in there. And people have voted every time for it? Overwhelmingly. Okay. I'll make a motion to pass this. I'll um, second it. Okay, I, I, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> again, I'm going to vote against this simply because I think we got so many big issues. I, I, I realize it's small money, but small money builds up into big money, and uh, I can't really approve any of, the, any of the ones when we're going for those big issues. I would, uh, um, in a uh, jocular mood, uh, ask if there's any land to be um, purchased that's left in Hampton, uh, but I know that uh, there might be a tiny bit. There might be um, some. And number two is, when was the last purchase by the uh, Conservation Commission? It's been at least four or five years. It's bachelor's Field. Yeah, bachelor's Field was the last purchase. And then that was a nice purchase. And uh, I, I, uh, uh, I, I echo uh, Selectman Waddell's. They have been so, eased and acquired, things of that nature. But there yeah. are different things they're looking at, like the gas station on the corner of Winnicott Road. Yeah that a lot of people in Hampton don't like. And $20,000 $20, to build up in the future could do things to change things like that. And I think where the people have voted overwhelmingly for it, it's something we should support. I think we should definitely, I think we should at least give the people the choice to approve and it. And I do again, know they're working on that with that gas station mm -hmm. and with private funds that are promised also. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Three. Those opposed? Three to two. So it'll go as opposed. I, as recommended. I recommended. Sorry about that. By majority. By the majority, that's correct. So the next one we have is electronic storage of town records. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's changed as well, Mr. Chairman. It has. It has because the, uh, let me read it. Oh, I have it here. You have the change. That one. Yeah, that's the one. You got a boss. Okay. Shall a town Shall a town of Hampton vote and raise appropriate sum of fifty thousand dollars to begin the process to convert stored paper documents up to electronic format 
as authorized by Chapter 226 of the Acts of 2016, said some $50,000 shall come from the undesignated fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2016, and that no amounts to be raised from taxation. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 37 semicolon 26 and will not lapse until the purpose is completed on March 19th, 2019, which is ever sooner. So nothing coming out of taxes? Nothing coming out of the unexpected. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve this. I'll second the motion. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Are we now through with financial warrant articles? Um, Pretty much. Well, except for the ones to be held for next week. There are, right, no. there are four. Actually, there's more than four because you get to collect the bargaining items on there. Could I just make a, a very quick statement about the financial warrant articles? Sure. I'm, I'm going to go read and, and, and expound just a little bit on <clears throat> what Selectman Bean said a few minutes ago and what Mr. Selvedick said when he was here. He was talking about sound financial uh, planning. And I think it's more that for 10 years there was an ignoring of basic structural infrastructure, and we're now paying the bill. So yes, it's very easy to keep a flat tax rate if you don't address the problems. Lafayette Street we've known about since 1980s. Church Street is not something that can be ignored. The pipes under the, under the marsh, these are things that have been put off, put off, put off. Finally, you have to make a decision, and the decision has to be, are we going to address them, or are we going to put them off a little longer and have more problems? So I think people need to look at that. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. People aren't trying to raise anybody's taxes. People are trying to deal with the basic infrastructure problems that we have in town. That were ignored. That were ignored. It was not sound financial planning. It was ignoring problems. If I, I could have a very cheap budget in my house. I'd, I'd like to talk because I was on probably almost all of those boards, and I don't think we really ever ignored anything that was important that came up. Um, something like the, um, pro the, what happened with the marsh across the marsh, which I still don't think we need to do because it's already been fixed. Uh, never was that ever even ever mentioned in any way. Um, <clears throat> the on Route One, that is probably the one thing that I can agree that people absolutely knew about. But whenever anybody on all those other boards came forth with something that had to happen, it always happened. W one thing that w happened also during that time was seven years of recession and people couldn't afford to have their taxes go up over and over again. The biggest thing that suffered at that time were probably the, um, <clears throat> it went, the collective bargaining uh, issues went, uh, up, you know, they were not approved time after time. Um, but I don't remember anything being of, um, ignored that was brought up. There were never anything ignored when I was on this board that had to happen, ever. I will uh, change my, my wording from ignored to neglected a little bit. And I will, I will say that in this town, if we take a look at the school bond that they're talking about since 1970, that was the last renovation up there. They're, they're teaching in a 19th century uh, building for 21st century um, education. The town, our, our Parks and Recreation Department could have been helped along the way. So, so there are, there, there have been neglect go on. Ignore was a too strong of a word. I apologize. Because you have to remember that uh, the fire dis uh, departments were built and quite a bit, of those things were given top priority. So there was really, I wouldn't call it, I sat here and fought many of the battles. And that is, the f five of the of those years I've looked back upon it, and the t over five years the taxes only went up 2% over the total five years. Great. So that was something that needed to happen at the time of the recession. Mr. Chairman, may I? Sure. I think uh, uh, our finance director, who was uh, a stellar, stellar performer, and uh, uh, was promoted from within the ranks and uh, brought up 
funder, Mr. Welch's tutelage and the former finance director, uh, and her compliance with GASB was one of the most significant uh, financial tools and speaks to uh, both Rick's issue and uh, Selectman Waddell's is that there was no scientific or administrative or professional approach from management. And that came from the Selectman. And we were told while I had tenure on this board uh, by other board members that it was too expensive to produce that compliance. It was a red flag at our audit. And of course, what it does is it identifies depreciation. And we had tr a tremendous and copious amount of physical assets. Rick has talked about it. And while there's no one underground looking at pipes, while there's no one at the pump house, which we almost suffered a catastrophic failure at, uh, we've gone through department heads. I have full confidence in our department heads now and Mr. Welch. But it identifies a 10% whack, if you will, a 10% expense on our budget every single year. That these assets, whether it's a fire truck that's $700,000 or a pipe that's underground that nobody knows the, the status of, that is the financial professional management that identifies what Jim talks about. And that was the neglect of the selectmen. And not, not Rick, and not Phil, and not the other boards, but to get that done, and Christy get that done. And there's a reason that the Federal Accounting Standing Boards wants that. There's a reason that the audit always red flagged that. And Christy developed that, and she did it for nothing. She did it for zero dollars. But people on this board said it would cost too much money to do. And so when Mr. Soberdeck comes in here, and I appreciate his attention to the budget, is a, is a citizen of this town, I appreciate his interest. And don't always agree with Mr. Soberdeck, but I appreciate his interest in his town. Uh, when he raises these issues, and he's a man of finance, and I don't hear him speak like this about this subject, that it was never there. It's a 10% expense on this budget every single year and when you whether you whether you know what's going on in pipes or not you know that when federal accounting standing board red flags you and audits and, and, and red flags your audit uh, there was a reason for it and we as leaders have to identify that and if you go 10 years and have not upgraded your infrastructure other than a new fire station other than a police station which you may or may not need but for the core 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 capital improvements we need, like roads, like Exeter Road, like this pipe. Uh, you're not setting aside the money. We just talked about a conservation fund for 20000 Well, we haven't done that for our town. And now we're getting there, and they're never easy discussions. We don't always agree, but there's a bunch of uh, uh, disassociated but very similarly interested people, and we'll get there. And I thank everybody for their cooperation. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I would just like to bring one other thing up, too, and I can't remember the amounts, but I'm sure Fred will remember. Um, when, and this, I'm just saying this to make people that are out there, uh, rest a little easier that when something of an emergency does happen, like uh, when the paddle went at the uh, uh, wastewater treatment center, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that, how much did that end up costing? Well, we ended up spending about $100,000 on that. But there was a lot of other stuff that happened. Well, there was, and, and the 100000 was the emergency actions to make things happen mm -hmm. so that we didn't have to just go crazy about doing things. We wanted to know exactly what needed to be done, and we needed some time to ar arrive at that conclusion. So we spent some of our existing cash in the budget to solve that problem, and then we came in with a bond issue for almost a million dollars to solve the problems in the station and correct the problems that were wrong. Mm -hmm. And that all passed. That all passed. And it was part of the infrastructure. I just want to point out that when an emergency does happen, we are able to act. And that was a good example. In fact, it's the best example that I've seen since I've been here. We will act. It's, it's similar to the seawall falling on the North Shore. Mm -hmm. We will act because we have to act. There's just no way around that. And, and I, would, I would just like to add that if you stick, keep, keep up your maintenance maintenance and keep checking, you, you don't have to act on emergencies. But they th that better th off they have done. a very good record there. Uh, even at that point, there was record the record keeping was never a problem, yeah. and they were maintaining it. They did have a pr part of the problem was it was where they had to get the parts. They had to go to Canada to get them or something. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Actually, good. they had to be made. They had to be made, yeah. I remember it was something like that. So we can move on to the 
non-appropriation one articles <clears throat> sir we can vote on tonight yes and mr chairman just yes. so you know that um, there was a question at one time as to whether selectman's recommendation could appear on non-money articles uh, since last year, the uh, New Hampshire Supreme Court has passed a decision that, given the wording of the statutes, it is, yes, the case that the selectmen can give recommendations on non-money warrant articles. So how, what is the want of this board? Do we want to put on, on that or not? Excuse me? Do we want to include our recommendations on these non-appropriation uh, articles? You, uh, you have for the last several years done that. Right. So do we want to continue that? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Consensus of the board, we will continue. Article number 10, as we have it written right now, is shall be, shall we modify the elderly exemptions for property tax in the town of Hampton pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 72 semicolon 27-A based on the assessed value qualified tax taxpayers to be as follows for a person 65 years of age up to 75 years of age hundred and twenty five thousand dollars currently it's at a hundred and twenty for a person 75 up to 80 160 is currently 150 for a person of 80 years of age or older 200,000 currently is at 178 to qualify the person must have been a New Hampshire resident for at least three consecutive years preceding April 1st, own the real estate individually, jointly, or if the real estate is owned by such a person's spouse, they must have been married for at least five years. In addition, the taxpayer must have a net income of not more than $38,000, or if married, a combined net income of less than $58,000, and own assets not to exceed in excess $250,000, excluding the value of, of a person's primary residence. The purpose of this article is to modify the exemption for the elderly due to the recent revaluation of the tax in order for the exemption to keep in pace with the inflation and the general increase of property values so as to leave no elderly person behind because of these value changes. Yes. I'm going to um, be against this. It's not something that I, I think that... <clears throat> um, I would love to say that I could that I'm for it, but I do think this is one of the things we can give up. The main reason why I'm against it is I have not seen one person that came in here and suggested that we do this. Who, so, who originated this? No, we originated we originated this every time we do a revaluation. The town originates this warrant article in order to keep the playing field level. So that's, and we present it to the board to see whether or not you wish to submit it. Otherwise, it has to come by petition. And I haven't seen, I'd rather see it come by petition. Any other questions from the board? Hey, Fred, have we, every other evaluation proved something like this, or? Every time we've done a reval, we've approved an amendment. Okay. I'm gonna be for this. I, I think that, that there are a lot of elderly people on fixed income with expensive properties that can't afford the taxes. And I think maybe they may haven't come forward yet, but, it, but I'm, uh, how much money are we talking? I will tell you that the same board that you're referring to before that did nothing are the ones that raised this at the time. We worked on this, we had a big study about it, and we are the ones that made it, right. raised I, it the last time. I will say that time. this is totally different from what I was talking about the well, last time. Well, that I mean, same board did this. Right, it totally wasn't different. because of the reevaluation. It's apples here and oranges here. Well, it wasn't because of the reevaluation. Okay, That's what I'm saying. I'd yes. like to say that I think this would be a nice way, like with the reevaluation, that we can help the elderly who are no longer working and that we can show that we do realize what Social Security is paying right now. And I think this would be very nice for the town of Hampton to get this on the warrant for the voters to decide. So moved. So a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Four in favor? One opposed. Next one is... Article 39, as written right now, shall the town of Hampton vote to amend Chapter 420, Solid Waste of the Code of Town of Hampton by deleting Section 420-2B, everything after the word town, including the subparagraphs 1 and 2, and by adding the new following new subparagraph 
4th, 420-2C. Hours for winter and summer, summer operation of the transfer station shall be determined by the Board of Selectmen and posted on the town's website. What do we have? What's you want to speak on this? Right now it's in the ordinance, and uh, there are times when we have to shut the station down and we can't because it's in the ordinance. Uh, we felt we should come to the selectmen if anything needs to be temporarily shut down or a day needs to be avoided so the selectmen can talk about it at the meeting, can either approve it or disapprove it, uh, and people in town can know what's going on in advance as opposed to just not getting the work done or inconveniencing them because we have to do the work. I'll make a motion to pass this. There's a motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Four. One opposed. Okay. Next one is Article 40 as written. Fence height changes on formerly leased land. Tell, shall the town of Hampton grant the Board of Selectmen under the authority of <coughs> authority under RSA 41 uh, semicolon 14 dash A to modify or release the deed restrictions imposed by the town under the lease land sales program to be added to the authority already granted to the town of Ham town, town to the Board of Selectmen under RSA 41 semicolon 14 A under Article 38 at the March 2002 Annual Town Meeting. Okay. Uh, right now, the lease land purchase um, requirements that are there as covenants on the property require that a fence cannot be more than three feet, three feet in height. We have a number of people, quite a number of people as a matter of fact, who have swimming pools. And by state law and ordinance, they have to have a fence that's four feet high. Uh, that's posing to be a problem because they've already installed the fences at four feet, and now they're illegal, and we have people complaining about those fences and want them taken down, which would pose a potential problem for children. So we'd like to get the, uh, this, this authority granted to the Board of Selectmen so when people come in and they want to put a pool in, or they want to put a fence up surrounding a pool, something of that nature, then they, the selectmen can have the authority to hold the necessary public hearing to grant that authority. I'd like to make that motion. I'll second it. What do they have to do now? They have to go to town meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might just suggest. You um, want to read I, it? I'd like to. No, I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> can we hold that for a bit? I'd like to chew on that one myself. Article 41. And I think it probably it would take an explanation by the fire chief in, uh, to uh, appreciate what's being done. Okay. So we will hold that off till next week. Thank you. Next one is Article 42. Except another streets. short one. Another short one. Shall the town of Hampton vote to accept the following streets as Class Five highways? These streets require a vote of the town meeting to be Class Five highways, and have not previously been placed before the town for a vote of acceptance. They have been paved and maintained by the town for many years. These streets shall be accepted at no cost to the town. Do I have to read all of them? You want, you want, you want to read all that? Can I read just the, the streets? <laughs> that we, just read the streets. I'll read the streets, yes. So, the first one is Dumas Ave and Cliff Ave. The next ones are Ocean Drive, Woodstock Street, Plymouth Street, Campton Street, Thornton Street, and Portsmouth Avenue, all located in Sun Valley. Next one is Pearl Street, Gill Street, Redmond Lane. Next one is Viking Street and Thorwald Ave. The next one is Toll Avenue. Next one is Newman Street and Mason Street. The next one is Arcadia, Emerald Ave, Sapphire, Crest, Ash Street, Spruce Street, Surf Street, Overlook Street. Next one is Lamprey Terrace. The next one is Boston Ave. Except as the numbered streets, 1st through 19th. So that would be all of, all the numbered streets between 1st and 19th Street. Correct. Right. 
Kept Acorn Street. Smith Ave. That's it. And that's it. Yep. That's enough. So it's a long article, and there's a lot more written in there, which which spells it out what they were and how they were came in. But that's those are the, the list of streets that, that we need we are looking to accept as class five highways. Any motion? Any? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. The 99-year lease at 10 Ancient Highway. Shall the town of Hampton authorize the Board of Selectmen on half of the town, it should be on behalf. On behalf, yeah. Of the town to issue a 99-year lease to the owners of the property at 10 Ancient Highway. It having been discovered that this small portion of the dwelling house is located on town property. Majority vote required. I'll move that. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next one is Article 44 is written. Shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to convey to the Hampton School District upon such terms and conditions as the selectmen may, be determined, uh, may determine as appropriate and in the best interest of the town, all of the town's right, title, and interest to two separate parcels of land. The first, commonly known as the Arnold property, which has been under lease to the Hampton School District for the purpose of an off-street bus loading and unloading area in accordance with Article 43 of the 1988 annual town meeting. And the second, commonly known as the Martell property, over to which the town, over which the Hampton School District has an easement for a travel lane, so that in accordance of Article 43 from the 1988 annual town meeting, both located on Academy Ave. These conveyances are co contingent upon the successful passage of the currently proposed bond issue for renovation to the Hampton Ca Academy and the carrying out of that project, and are further to be made subject to the revetter of title to the town of Hampton of said parcels should no longer be needed by the Hampton School for the school purposes. The vote of majority. This is the same as the article we had last year, correct? Exactly the same. I move that article. Motion, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And, well, I hope the last one we have here, I think. Article 45. The last one. Is this is uh, something that we've, we've come across this year. Is shall the town of Hampton vote to amend the code of ordinance to regulate the handling of transportation and disposal of the animal waste? Amend the code of the town of Hampton by adding chapter 18 animals to the following new section to be numbered 18 13. 18 13 handling, transportation, and disposal of animal waste. No person who is the owner, keeper, trainer, or person in charge of a dog or other animal, temporarily or otherwise, permit such animal to defecate in violation of said provisions of this chapter without the necessary actions immediately to remove such defecate in a safe and sanitary manner. Defecation removed in compliance with the provisions of this chapter shall be placed in a plastic or similar container, placed in a solid waste container for the disposal at the solid waste facility. Animal defecation is that disposed of or transported or to be placed in a public or private sewer, storm drain, or storm drain system, or any their part therefore, whether public or private, shall be in violation of this order. Any person found to have placed animal defecation in these public or private sewer, storm drains, or any other storm drain system shall be fined $1,000 for each action and shall be responsible for the cost incurred of cleaning up the system until it passes any test required by the state and federal stormwater quality acts or regulations. And to amend the code of Hampton, the code of the town of Hampton by adding chapter 406-6, use of public sewer subsection C, and then five, animal defecation. There's well, a mouthful. Well done, Mr. Chairman. There's a lot of defecation going on. A lot of defecation on. going on. <laughs> but we have seen, you know, we've had complaints uh, we've found a number of storm drains that have had... Um, so moved. So moved. Yeah, I'd like to say I was walking in Boston today down Commonwealth Ave, and every time you come to a corner where there's a drain, there's a little plaque that's actually pretty big because it says, this goes to Boston Harbor. Yeah. And uh, it, at a great expense. 
and so it should the, that must be the I thought I kept thinking to myself what would be going in here but that must be what it is could be yeah. anything could be oils could be anything that yeah. they put down there so um, we're planning on um, doing something in the order of putting a painted legend in front of our manholes and, 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 and storm drains that this runs to Hampton Harbor mm -hmm. so people will Good know idea. that that material is going to have an effect and isn't it true also Mr. Welch that the new federal stormwater regulations going into effect are going to require the town to test every single outfall regardless of the source of the water coming into it and for us to be responsible for cleaning it up that is a proposal under the ms4 permit which is to be issued either in december or january by the epa in boston region uh yes that's true and it's also true that if we identify by test contaminated material in there we have to clean the line until it is clean and continue to test until it's clean otherwise we're subject to substantial fines so moved yeah. i'll second and i agree with this 100 percent would the would the thousand dollar fine scare people away from voting for this would people say a thousand dollars i mean i agree with the thousand dollar fine 100 percent. yeah but i'm just saying would people looking at it the warren article say geez charging them a thousand dollars for that Considering it's probably going to cost us, if they continue to dump animal waste in the storm drains, it's probably going to cost us three or four times that amount to clean them. Okay. So, that's a very intensive project. Yep. I agree. <clears throat> so we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. You know, when I was last down in Florida, I saw, uh, you know, we talk about these expensive containers to put up to hold the bags and stuff like this. Oh, yeah. They had taken plastic mailboxes. Put them up and then drilled two holes in them. And everybody that was there put their shop and save bags or whatever in there. And it gave people a place to have a bag oh. at very limited or no cost to, oh. to having up a, a way to encourage That's a good idea. picking up. Yeah. So that was good. Very good idea. Um, I, I think that's the few remaining ones we have are, are the ones listed. At, and we're going to do those until... Next week. We'll be doing those next week, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know the Public Works is working on two of them. Um, the fire department's working on the third one, and uh, our legal department and our negotiators are working on the last one. So there are only four left. There are only four left. And, less, and well, the fire codes, do you know? And the fire codes. And the fire codes. Subject to, of course, any petitions that may arrive from citizens who, who get a petition or... <coughs> Anything that may arise uh, while we're considering these items and, and would have to be added by the board, we have until uh, January 10th to uh, to add warrant articles. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen, lady. Next thing we have is new business. The 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting schedule. Everybody get a copy of it? Uh, I do. Yes. So moves. Is it moves. pretty much? Pretty much what we've, we've done this year. What we've been doing this year and the year before. Okay. And except for some people, it's worked well. I mean, except for some criticism uh, on some other places, it's done. We've, it's worked very well. It works well. Yeah. So I have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next thing we have is a street light at 2233 Boys Head Terrace, <coughs> private light. We sent the board a, a lengthy, not too lengthy, but a lengthy uh, <coughs> memorandum. This light has never been approved by the town. You, you've never approved it. Uh, it was a private light. Somehow it got converted to uh, be a public light. Um, all that we want to do is, is either have you confirm that it should be there and we should be paying for it on private property or um, take it down, one of the two. How many lights are up there? One. Well, the standard of the planning board is to have one light at the end of any street, and that's quite a long street and it circles around. <clears throat> so I would think that this is reasonable. Where, where is it exactly? Boar's Head Terrace. It's, yeah. That's a private road. Yeah. Uh, it's no, road. it's a public it's road. Not, is it a public, a, road? Road. It's a public okay. road? Yeah, it goes up, you know, right behind, right across from the condos that are to the south of where right. I live. It goes up a hill-like, yeah. then it circles around. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, it comes back down. It's yeah. one of the, you know, it's part of the Boar's Head area. Yeah. And, yeah, I make a motion that we do that. Okay. Second. Second. What's the cost per year, do you know? Uh, about $150. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Any closing comments? Seeing none, I believe we have a motion to go into a non-public under RSA uh, 91, 91A3, 3, Roman 2, 2 small C &E. A, and oh. small C, public employee compensation and <laughs> reputation. Okay. So I have, a, I have that motion. Who made the motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor, I need a roll call. Aye. 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 Thank you very much.